Welcome to the Lights On Show. I'm your host, Jacob Morrison, and this is a podcast about self-development. In this week's episode, I talk about a few keynote speakers that I was able to learn from at my ICDC DECA conference. If you guys enjoy, please be sure to follow me on Twitter at lights underscore show, and please, please, please leave a rating on whatever platform you're listening to this on. Hope you guys enjoy. Jump right into it. So, this week's episode, uh, as you guys will probably notice, I do not have a guest with me uh, once again. However, there is a specific purpose for not having a guest. Uh, and that is, uh, I think I previously mentioned this, but I was at the DECA International um, Career Development Conference in Orlando, Florida uh, two weeks ago. And I wanted to do a pretty similar thing uh, that I did for the state competition, kind of run through what I learned. Uh, my experience there, and just kind of make it a short, uh, quick, but still pretty influential episode nonetheless. So, to get right into it, like I said, um, let me go through what Internationals is. So, Internationals, um, DECA is a worldwide, or kind of worldwide, obviously there's some countries that don't do it or participate, uh, but it's technically a worldwide conference uh, where kids from all across the United States... Canada, Mexico, um, countries in the EU, uh, China, Japan, Asia, all that types of stuff. All these kids come in to Orlando to compete in DECA events. So I was there for the for the school-based enterprise, which is basically this huge project or report you have to do on the little retail space you have inside your inside your school. Uh, it's all run by students, and it's like a real business. So you make money, you sell, you advertise, do all these things. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so w- this is a huge ordeal. It's not like state where you're only there for a couple of days. We were in Orlando for about six days. There's um, theme park deck and nights. There's huge motivational spe- like keynote speakers. There's opening and closing sessions. They had the Blue Man Group, which is those the blue guys that sit there and like beat on drums for um, like 30, 40 minutes. It has like paint splattering and everything like that. So like they invited those guys to go out. Um, Universal Studios is in Orlando, or at least one of them is. And the park was able to be like, I guess, rented or lent out to all DECA kids for an entire night. A lot of kids go to Disney. All types of really cool stuff. So the point I want to talk about specifically in this episode is the keynote speaker we had right before the Blue Man Group played at the opening session. Now, I don't remember this guy's name, um, but I do want to acknowledge the fact that these are not my exact words. Now, obviously, yes, I'm getting and I'm telling the story through my lens and through the way I interpret these things, but nonetheless, they aren't my words. Um, but I want to talk about, like I said, some of the things that really caught my eye and the things that I were able, I was able to really reminisce with. And the first thing he talked about was when people in general, when we evaluate whether or not we failed or we succeeded or when we should quit or when we should stick, kind of like the dip, it's all determined on whether or not we stop trying. He said, you fail because you stop trying. And what that meant to me is that, especially in today's society, we have this huge push for um, quick, easy success, or we're always we always want instant gratification. So I feel like a lot of millennials, or I think my generation's like Gen X or Gen Z, I think it's Gen Gen Z or Gen Y or something like that. Um, we're so used to being instantly gratified for everything every for everything that we do, like freemium games, social media, um, the way that our curriculums are set up in school. Everything's based off of like super snappy instant gratification. And so this leads to a lot of really earn, early burnout and failures or alleged failures. And where that comes into this point is that a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of millennials, they get super duper excited to start something and they do all the steps they need. They get a big bank loan, they go buy an office, they go invest in something, they go tell their friends, they do all these things, and then they start. But as soon as they don't see that reward instantly, 
which most businesses do not get that anyways, then they fail because they'll just stop trying. They realize, huh, I can't make a quick buck off of this or this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be instantly, not even wanting to work for it. And so they stop trying and call it a failure. Um, and then the next point he talks about is something that I think I've noticed, I, something I've already previously mentioned, but that's the idea of that being mediocre is actually harder than being an overachiever. Basically, the way that he explained it, though, is that the market is so flooded with easy stuff and easy people and people that don't want to go try hard that, that, that there's a surplus of easy people and not enough jobs. So the supply and demand for easy and low quality or low skilled jobs is way too many people and he related that to his experiences and some of the experiences that he had were playing basketball with the president and that at that time it was president obama and that's exactly what he did he he and his friends were like you know what no one else is doing this garbage so why don't we just try it and they inevitably were able to get it so I think you might be able to find this guy on social media if you look up, like, four teenage kids go play basketball with Obama. Probably. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. But to me, that spoke out because I think a lot, uh, especially when I was a little bit younger, I would just be like, man, it's too hard, or some other kid's going to beat me doing this, or some other kid's going to beat me doing this. And I've been able to apply that pretty strategically in my life. Um, For example, I'll just give an example of, the way that it helps solidify this idea in me is there's a um, there's a test that my school takes, and I know a lot of other schools take it, um, called Trigstar. And what it is, it's basically just a trigonometry-based math competition where you sit in a big room with a bunch of other kids, and you just take a test on triangles and, like, land surveying um, questions stuff like that all are just within uh, the triangular world of figuring out problems and everyone and their mom it seemed like was like oh I'm just gonna do whatever questions I have to do to pass I'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna do that and I took this guy's advice because I ended up taking the trick star test after um, Orlando so I was able to think about this as I was like practicing for the test and that kind of made me think like wow if everyone else is gonna not try if I try just a little bit, I can win. And I ended up winning 100 bucks, And now I get to compete at the state level where I'm going to apply the same principle again. Like, hmm, am I really going to get you know stumped by someone else or am I going to be the one stumping everyone else? So it's just something, just something to think about as I think people go about their daily lives and they pick things that they want or do not want to do. Um, to this next part, I know I've, we've talked about a ton on the podcast, but he said... Giving to others can make you emotionally strong and just able to kill everything you do. Like, he, t- he basically just talked about how selflessness continues, how selflessness grows you farther than selfishness. I think I said that right. But, and this has been talked about with multiple people that I've, that I've interviewed. They just talked about how being selfless has grown them a huge, a huge amount. And so that's something I'm really excited for as those opportunities continue to show themselves to me. I'm going to take all of them and try to grow myself in the way that's going to develop me into the person I want to become. He also mentioned that bucket lists aren't selfish. People don't look back on the things they did with regrets. They look back on the things they didn't do. So... I'm not sure how many people actually think bucket li- bucket lists are selfish. Like, I don't think a lot of people make them. Um, but I think his second point was really good is people don't look back on the things they did with regrets. They look back on the things they didn't do. So that's a huge thing. And I think that's probably more encouragement to make a bucket list and to actually do it. And obviously, I can't speak from experience because I'm only 17 years old. But I think if we think with the end in mind or the end of our lives in mind, then work backwards, we can plan out the things we want to do. For example, going to college or getting that job or asking that girl or that dude on a date or taking a job or doing all those things that could be potentially risking a challenge, and then you don't take them. And then 20, 40, 50 years down the line, 
you feel something missing in your soul. You don't feel complete yet. You don't feel like you can die and be happy. So there's always something, at least something that I always think about, is how can I make sure I have a legacy I'm proud of or a legacy that I want to share with my kids or share with my family or just a legacy that I can die knowing I did what I had to do. And then he obviously continued that right into his next point, which is don't die with those regrets. So make everything and anything possible that you need to do so you cannot die with regrets. I thought that was really um, powerful. And lastly, he talked about um, with this whole regret part and the whole becoming spontaneous and pushing farther than everyone else and not being that mediocre kind of person is get people involved in your goals. They can help you grow. And what I took off of this when he said that And what example really helped to solidify that was when he was talking about how he and his friends were able to play basketball with President Obama. There's no way he could have been able to do that by himself. He he mentioned that humans were not made to be alone. We are kind of pack animals. We're pack people. We need each other for emotional, physical support all the time. We always need each other for something. If mankind were to have to teach themselves physics, chemistry, um, basic algebra, um, any medical science, every single generation, that it would just, we would, it, it would not be the same world. If Einstein learned everything that he learned, and then I would have to go learn it for myself, be absolutely crazy, be stupid. It wouldn't be efficient. And so throughout all of history, we've seen people relying on others to help and to succeed in the human development. All right, and then we also had a another keynote speaker. This was part of our SBE Academy, and I don't know her name either. I know I kind of kind of slacking on this whole credit thing, but um, she was actually really cool. She was really spunky and inspiring, and able to really kind of help push a lot of things through. Um, For example, she talked about how failure is part of the process and you have to trust it. And I think that goes with the um, you fail because you stop trying. And the way that that connects, at least in my mind, is that we think think that we're given failure. So let's say we're doing an an e-commerce business and we lose a little bit of profits in our first month. Right. Some people might take that as a failure and then they'll stop trying or. Well, yeah, so they stop trying and then they think that failure is bad. It's a bad thing. But what she was talking about is that that failure or that quote unquote failure for that month is going to teach you lessons to continue to grow with. So really cool. Talk about that. She said. You have to find your own niche. And what she means by that is you have to, or at least in the context that she explained, is you have to do what you're doing and find other people that are doing it too. Find your niche. Find your group. Just like the first keynote speaker talked about. Tell people. Get others involved that support you, that love you, that like your ideas, that want to use your ideas. This idea of being a lone warrior or just trying to rush and do things without help is not going to help with anything. And this goes for businesses. This goes for uh, freelancers. This goes for students, for teachers, for just, I, I could almost, I mean, your goals, your individual goals, family life, your friendships, your relationships, any types of those things are better when you have people to help or when you, you when you find people that are similar, right? If you like playing Dungeons & Dragons, you're not going to go try to play Dungeons & Dragons with a football player. Or vice versa. You're going to want to find people that are similar to you. that are going to help build you up in the way that you want to. And like I said, I know this was kind of a short episode. But uh, right now I'm in the midst of AP testing. um, And I just do not have that much time uh, to go out and interview people or do those types of things. But I already kind of planned on making an episode about these keynote speakers. Because it was incredibly inspiring to listen and to... Uh, See the way they hold themselves and all that types of stuff. Um, Episode next week should have an interview. Not quite sure. Got to plan that out. 
But I really appreciate you guys always coming in, listening, giving me the love I need to continue to keep going and not think that it's a failure and then quit. Um, and I hope to see you guys or hope to see you guys watching or listening on my little uh, hosting website uh, next week. So appreciate it. Hope you guys have a beautiful day and peace.